Now, I can walk without that. But after you break a leg, it's, too, it's kind of stupid. <laughs> and uh, I, see, I see a lot of people. Would you give me a, a songbook? Yes, sir. I have to get my stuff. So. I see a lot of old people. And they're staggering. I'm thinking, why are you, are you got so much pride that you, you'd rather break a leg or an arm and uh, then to have something to stabilize you? I guess they are, but. Not me. I don't like broke, broke bones. Huh? Maybe you like them, but I don't like them. And uh, so I'm very thankful to be able to be here with you. I know Brother Mike and them a long time. And uh, I remember when the church was the other way. It wasn't like this. Y'all have done a lot of different things from the first time I was ever in this church. And, and uh, so I'm very thankful for the opportunity. And if you got your Bible, turn with us to Isaiah 53, Acts 8. Uh, so begin, begin reading there in Isaiah 53. Who hath believed our report? To whom is arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, as a root out of dry ground. He hath no, no form nor calmness, and when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrow, acquainted with grief. We hid as were our faces from him. He was despised, and we abstained him not. And when I get in this message, the, the, the stuff's going to start, the stuff's going to come out there, what's in this chapter. This chapter in Psalm 22. This t tells the attitude of the people. Yeah, yeah. Psalm tw tw uh, 22 tells us what happened on Calvary. Yeah, right. And uh, uh, the Gospels don't tell you what happened on Calvary. And on Calvary, Jesus Christ, matter of fact, in, in Isaiah 58, Jesus says to Satan, he'd take him on. That's right. That's right. And he, t he took him on yeah, on Calvary. Right. And... Uh, I believe if we could, uh, if God would show us the scene of Calvary, I believe you would see a seven-headed dragon attacking him on Calvary. Because it said they gnashed upon him with their teeth. Yeah, right, right. After he'd been beaten with a cat of nine tails. Until he was beaten so bad his bones. He could, said that he could tell all his bones. You know what a teller is. That's something that counts money in the bank. Yeah. means he could count all his bones. And... Uh, uh, it's from the sixth hour to the ninth hour, and I believe at the ninth hour, that's when Jesus Christ cried, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Jesus Christ was alone on Calvary. Yes, you go look at Hebrews chapter 1, verse 3. He purged our sins by himself. Yeah, right. uh, man, I said to a man one time that the father turned his back on him. He said, He didn't know I said, Read your scripture. He's alone on Calvary. And, uh, but I believe in chapter 18 in Psalms that uh, tells me that the uh, father turned around and come down. He was angry. Why that earth shook, God was angry. <laughs> and uh, that's when Jesus said, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. And, uh, and his flesh, it went to the grave. His soul went to hell. He said, I'm a worm, a no man. If you're here and lost, if you die and go to hell, you're going to be a red maggot in hell. Yeah. You're not right. going to look like you are. Right, right. And I believe that's why Jesus Christ, sweat became in great drops of blood. I believe that was when, uh, when, when he saw himself in that cup. Yeah. That holy thing saw what he was going to become in hell. And uh, I believe that's why he was so... Uh, so distressed in the garden there with it that the sweat became got great. That holy thing, he, you know, can you imagine him being so, being so holy and he sees himself as a red maggot in hell? And uh, first time I ever preached that down, Dr. Ruckman's, I thought you could bounce a, a pin off the carpet and 
because uh, boy, that crowd didn't believe what I said, but old Doc got up and said, he said, turn to Psalm 23. <laughs> he said, read that scripture. And then he said, what did it say? He said, he said, I'm a worm, a no man. He said, that's what happened to the Son of God. His soul turned into a red maggot. But see, God promised Jesus Christ if he would do this, he promised him he'd raise him from the dead and give him eternal life as a man. And there's a man sitting at the right hand of the Father with eternal life, and he'll give it to anybody that will repent and trust him as Savior. The first time I I was witness to, I, I cussed a man out. I put it and knocked his teeth down and stuff. God had a right to take Bobby Utley and put him in hell right then and burn him. But he didn't. He showed mercy and gave me another chance. And when he gave me another chance, nobody had to beg me. I ran down the aisle, caught the preacher by the and said, my name's Bobby Utley. I'm going to hell. I won't get saved. And uh, he saved me. And so this is what, I'm, what we're reading. Surely he had borne our griefs, carried our sorrows, yet we did see him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. He was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our necklace. The chastisement our peace was upon him. With his stripes we are healed. All we are like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone into his own way. And the Lord had laid upon him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was uh, afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He was brought as a lamb to the slaughter. And as sheep before his, her shears he is dumb. So he opened not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment. Who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off out of the land of the living for the transgression of my people. Now let's go to Acts. Go to Acts chapter 8 and verse 33. In his humiliation, his judgment was taken away. Who shall declare his generation? For his life was taken from earth. That don't even look like Isaiah uh, 53, 8. And when I, when I was asked this, I, I was in Michigan, and, and, uh, and the, these people that asked me, they far got more uh, knowledge than I ever thought about having. And one of them was to earn doctors, and the other one got to earn doctor's degree down yonder. So, and uh, he's a young man, and then, boy, the knowledge that uh, brother Andrew got has got. Thank God for that. But when they asked me that question, I, I looked at it and I thought, oh, I don't understand. I don't know. But there's one thing that I know: if there's anything changed in the New Testament from the Old, the Holy Spirit done it, not the translators. So I come home and I sit down and I, I said, Lord, I said, Holy Spirit, you change this scripture. Why? Well, he said unto me, he said, read it again. In his humiliation, his judgment was taken away. And that's, that's what the Holy Spirit said. Now, look at there. His judgment was taken away. Well, who took away his judgment? In Luke uh, 23, 1, and behold, the multitude then arose and led him to Pilate. Uh, and uh, in verse 2, and they began to accuse him, saying, We found this man, this fellow, perverting the nation, forbidding to give tribute to Caesar, saying that he, is, he himself is Christ the king. He was not. That was a lie. They lied like a dog. And I'm going to show you in the scripture that they lied. Because he said, and when they were come, he said unto him, Master, we know that thou art true. What you lying about? You don't, believe, you don't believe no such a thing. You're lying like a bunch of dogs. And cares for no man. He cared for all men. For thy regardest not the person of men, but teacheth the way of God truth. Why don't you believe it? Why are you wanting to kill him if you believe that? It ain't that they're trying to they're trying to trap him in making a statement uh, uh, about the uh, Roman Empire, and he said, uh, "Is it lawful to give tribute to Caesar or not?" And he said, "Shall we give or shall we not give?" But he, knowing their hypocrisy, 
and said to them, Why tempt ye me? Bring me a penny that I may see it. And they brought it, and they said unto him, Who's, He said unto him, Who's, uh, uh, who's in this image and superstition? And they said unto him, Caesar's. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Render unto Caesar the things of Caesar, and to God the things of God. I mean, and they marveled at what he said. Uh, then when they questioned Peter, Doth not your master pay tribute? And he said, Yes. And when he was come into the house, Jesus prevented him, saying, What, what thinkest thou, Simon? Of whom do the kings of the earth take custom uh, to, or tribute or to their own children or strangers? Peter said unto him, of strangers. Jesus said unto him, uh, then, they, then are the tri children free? Notwithstanding, lest they should offend them, go thou to the sea and cast a, uh, cast a hook and take up the fish that first cometh up. Mm -hmm. And when thou hast opened his mouth, Thou will find a piece of money, and, and thou take it and give it unto them for me and you. Yeah. Now that fish knew how much the money had to get. Oh, he just knew when I got the one, the Lord laid my, the amount of money that's needed to pay the tribute. Yeah. Yeah. It wasn't short, that's right. and it wasn't more. Mm -hmm. And the only, then in Luke 23, uh, 3, and Pilate asked him, saying, Aren't thou the king of the Jews? Yeah. He answered him, Said thou sayest, saith it. Pilate did not say that. This is a prophecy from the mouth of what Pilate is going to say. Because mm -hmm. yeah. in my, uh, Matthew 27, 37, said over his head, his accusation, This is Jesus, king of the Jews. Right. Mark, 1526, and the superscription of his uh, accusation was written over him, the king of the Jews. Luke, in 2338, and the superscription also is written over him in the letters of Greek, Japheth, Latin, Ham, Hebrew, Shem. This is king of the Jews. Yeah. And Pilate wrote the title, Put it on the cross. Uh, the writing was Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. And they, you remember what they said to Pilate? Said he said it. Pilate said, "What I have written, I have written." I believe Pilate kind of he really got angry with the Jews for this thing's over with. We must notice the statement in Isaiah that what it says there concerning that, and he was taken from prison. And from judgment, that literally happened. But because of what they done, the whole thing, Scripture, is changed. When the morning was come, all the chief priests and the elders of the people took counsel against Jesus to put him to death. And when they had, when they had bound him, they led him away, delivered him to, to Pontius Pilate the governor. Pilate said to them, what shall I do? with Jesus, which is called Christ. They all said unto him, let him be crucified. And the governor said, why? What evil hath he done? I found no cause of the death of him. I was therefore chasing him and let him go. And when Pilate saw that, and then see, they cried the more, crucify him. When Pilate saw that he could not prevail nothing, but that rather a torment was made, he took water and washed his hands before the multitude, saying, I am innocent of the blood of this just person. That's what Pilate said about Jesus Christ. And then another passage in the scripture, then he, they, then he released Barabbas unto them. When they had scourged Jesus, he delivered him to be crucified. Now, the question that was asked who shall declare his generation? Good question for it to be asked the nation of Israel. That should have been the one that declared because Isaiah 53, 8 says, says so, but they avoided it and, and, and took away the judgment that a Gentile 
was ready to set him free. In Matthew 27, 24, when Pilate saw that he could not prevail nothing, but a rather a torment was made, he took water, washed his hands, before the multitude said, I am innocent of the blood of this just person. Now, I believe Pilate was mad when he said, when he said, see you to it. I think he was angry. I don't think he just said, see you to it. I think he yelled at that crowd. And, uh, and have, uh, have your way, Israel, behold your king. Have it your way. In John 19, 14, and it was a preparation of the Passover about the sixth hour. And he said to the Jews, Behold your king. But they cried out, Away with him, away with him. Crucify him. Pilate said unto them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priests entered. We have no king but Caesar. Do you understand that Adolf Hitler was a Roman Catholic? And all of his top men in the military were Roman Catholic? That's Caesar. And uh, Adolf Hitler killed over 6 million Jews. And people right now, they're really upset about uh, Russia, about, about, about Russia being against uh, Ukraine. Hey, during that time, Ukraine killed a million Jews too. God don't pay off every Friday. Amen. He'll come down the road. Now, that, that them people are suffering over there because they killed them Jews back in the days of Adolf Hitler. And... Uh, so, you, child of God, you sin, God may not pay off. You may go out there and do something, and God don't do nothing about it right then. You think, think, well, maybe it ain't wrong. No, God chooses his time for pay. And so we find here, as we behold what God took off the table. And why did God do it? In his humiliation, his judgment was taken away. Who shall declare his generation? For his life is taken from earth. Jesus Christ was humiliated. The son of the living God was humiliated by Israel before the Roman Empire. The Bible makes it plain in Acts uh, 3.13. The God of Abraham and of Isaac and the God of Jacob the God of your fathers hath glorified his son, Jesus Christ, yep, yep. whom you delivered up and denied him in the prison of Pilate when he was determined to let him go. But you denied the Holy One and yep. just and desired a murder yep. to be granted unto you and killed the Prince of Life whom God has raised from the dead, wherefore we are witnesses. That's what that humiliation is about. I mean, they literally humiliated the Son of God. If you'll go to uh, Acts 7, you'll notice you'll start, he starts all the way back in Abraham. And when Jesus Christ was on the cross of Calvary, there was something he said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what to do. Jesus Christ, God was ready to forgive Israel. And when, when Stephen preached this message, he gets down, and I'll get into it a little bit down, when he got into it, that uh, uh, Jesus Christ was standing up. He was ready to come back as king. He was ready to forgive Israel. He was ready to come back. But when what they done to Stephen, I mean, they gnashed upon the man. With, I mean, like a bunch of wild dogs. You ain't never had them grab you and start gnashing upon you with, the, with their teeth. They said, oh, that's just a figure of speech. No, that's what the Bible says. Ain't no figure of speech. That's what happened. And they stoned him to death. And he asked for their forgiveness. And God said, no. It's off the table. His life was taken from him. Not for the transgression of his people. He's saying to the Jews, you'll go to heaven like every Gentile dog or you'll burn in hell. That Gentile dog will come and trust Jesus Christ, the Lord and Savior. Uh, they get eternal life and that's the only way you're going to heaven. You'll find what the scripture says in Matthew 27, 20. But the chief priests and the elders persuaded the multitude that they should ask Barabbas and, listen to this, and destroy Jesus. We ain't talking about killing. We're talking about destroying his testimony that nobody would believe in him. 
That's why Israel is like they are in the condition they are today. They, do not, they don't believe that Jesus Christ was who he said he was. Every once in a while, a Jew will believe it and get saved. But as a nation, and then what God has lifted saying to them when Jesus Christ stood up and they, and they killed Stephen, God says, I'll see, I'll see you Jews over in Revelation 19. And oh, the way that they were killed. See, they're the one that's made the statement, let his blood be upon us and on our children's house. You better watch what you ask God. You ask God something, God may, God may do it, and, and then you won't like what God does. Let his blood be upon us and on our children's children. Right there before Pilate. And God said, that's what you want. That's what you'll get. I mean, th th we're talking about his chosen people. Yeah, right. We're talking about a nation that God showed so much mercy to over and over again. And all they want to do is live in idolatry and worship false gods. See, all this Buddha, this Buddha and all this uh, uh, sh uh, Allah and all that. Allah is a moon god. He's not the god of the Bible. That's not Jehovah. And say, our, our God don't tell you to go out and kill somebody. Our God tells you to go out and win them with Jesus Christ. Right. Allah tells them to go out and kill for him. And, and they do it. Uh, they're doing it all over them countries. They kill Christians. The moon, they take credit, take them, and they cut their heads off. And people don't realize how wicked uh, this Muslim re religion is. And, and you notice, you notice that. Uh, uh, Black people are talking about this plan they got, Black Lives Matter. Well, why are you killing each other? Yeah. Yeah. It ain't white people killing you. You're killing each other. And that movement is, is communism. Yeah. Let me ask you a question. Any black person ever, I said, it, ask them, how many black people have you ever saw in the Russian army? Zero. That's communism. How many black people do you see in the Chinese army? Zero. When communism takes over, black people will be annihilated. They'll annihilate them because, and they, they don't understand it because they listen to a bunch of fools yeah. that's uh, taking them down a the road to destruction. Yeah, right. Right. And people need to understand uh, uh, what what this. Listen, America is not in prophecy. You, you're not going to find American prophecy nowhere. America's got to go down. Yeah. We're going down. God put Trump in office for one purpose. Make Israel, make Jerusalem the capital of Israel and give them the West Bank. That's what God's put him in there for. Because this nation's got to go down. And everybody's really thinking, boy, how the Republicans are going to do it right Half of the, Repu the only difference between a Republican and a Democrat, one has a D in front of it and another has an R in front of it. <laughs> They're politicians. And uh, they're up there living off of me and you. And they live to the day they die. Most of them go up there as paupers. They, they, when they leave there, they're multimillionaires. And uh, they ain't going to change nothing. America's got to be out of the picture. The buyer from the north. Russia has got to come against Israel. The kings from the east, China, they got to come against Israel. And we're getting close to that. We're getting very close to that. The rapture could come at any moment and get us out of here. And the Antichrist caused this, the whole world, it ain't just America having this problem, financial problem. The whole world is having it. It's going to get so bad that this Antichrist can step on the scene and say he can settle everything. And Israel would believe that he is the Messiah. Because Jesus said, I come in my Father's name, you believe me not. Yep, yep. But there's one coming in his own name. Right. Him you will believe. That's right. And that's what's going to happen. Yep. And people cannot see this. But say, we, got, we, we have the scripture to prove to us what, what needs to be done. Let us behold, again, the judge before two rulers. In Luke 23, 5, and they were more to fear, saying, he stirreth up the people, teaching throughout all a jury, and beginning from Galilee to this uh, place. When Pilate heard he was of Galilee, he knew and belonged to Herod's jurisdiction. And as soon as he 
knew that he belonged to Herod's jurisdiction, he, he sent him to Herod, who himself also at Jerusalem at that time. You think it was accident that Herod was at Jerusalem at that time? No, it wasn't no accident. And, this, and, say, and here we have our Lord, their king, being humiliated in Luke 22, 3. And the chief priest and the scribe stood and vehemently accused him. And Herod, with his men of war, set him at that naught and mocked him and arrayed him in a glorious robe and sent him again to Pilate. And Pilate, when he had called together the chief priests and the rulers of the people, and said to them, Ye have brought this man unto me as one that perverted the people, and behold, I have examined him before you, and have found no fault in this man as touching those things wherein you accuse him. No, nor, nor yet Herod, for I sent him to him, and lo, nothing worthy of death is done unto him. Bible says in Deuteronomy chapter 19, verse 15, one witness shall not rise up against a man for any iniquity or any sin, in any sin that he sinned at the mouth of two witnesses or the mouth of three witnesses, shall the matter be established. Herod, Pilate, two witnesses. What was establishment? I find no fault in this man. He's not worthy of death. Here you've got God's chosen people screaming, hollering like a bunch of my crucify him, crucify him. In John 19, 10, then said Pilate unto them, Speakest thou not unto me? Knowest thou not that I have power to crucify thee and power to release thee? Jesus answered, Thou could have no power of all against me, except it were given thee from above. Therefore, he that delivered me under thee hath the greater sin. He. Well, who is that? Yeah, yeah. Well, the Bible says in John chapter 11, verse 49, And one of them named Caiaphas, being the high priest that same year, and unto them, Ye know nothing at all, nor consider that it is expedient for us that one man die for the people, that the whole nation perish not. It's Caiaphas. And Jesus Christ said his sin was greater than Pilate's. Mm. Chaos is in hell. Mm. Those religious leaders, they're in hell. Yeah. All Jews that do not trust Jesus Christ. Matter of fact, the Bible says uh, twice in the Old Testament Scripture, he said, if you be driven to the outermost parts of heaven, I will recover you. You remember, remember when our space shuttle blowed up? You know there's a Jew aboard? He blew it up out in space. God said, don't worry about it. I'll bring you from out of space. Same way when, when uh, all these people in the, uh, in the sea and the oceans are drowned and, and the sharks have ate them and everything. How the, how the, God going to get that? He's God. Yeah, right. Right. So he's going to get them bodies back together for a resurrection yeah, right. because he's God. People just don't realize how great our God is. And he pro prophesied that, that to son, one man, that one man was Chaopas. Thus behold, humiliating their king again. And it was, a, it was a, the preparation of the Passover. About the sixth hour, he saith unto the Jews, Behold your king. But they cried out, Away with him, away with him, crucify him. Pilate said to them, listen, listen to what Pilate said, crucify your king. The chief priest answered, we have no king but Caesar. How, can you imagine how that went to God for all, who all these years he had done for them people? Had, it's no wonder. It's no wonder the Jew has, has been hated He's been hated. America is the only place that the Jew found any refuge. I believe that's the reason God uh, uh, made There's two reasons I believe God put America here. One reason, the other reason I believe as great as this country is, is big and massive. This country could have fed the entire world and told them about Jesus Christ, but instead of that, 
They stole the land of the Indian, and now we're paying for it. They didn't do what. The Bible said, God shall enlarge Japheth. He shall dwell in the tents of Shem. The Indian was in a tent when we came. In the tents of Shem, and Canaan shall be his servant. So he enlarged Japheth from uh, Europe to a nation. And we should have done it, and we didn't do it. And because we didn't do it, we're suffering. We're suffering at the hand of, of all kinds of enemies simply because of what the, what the white man done to the Indian. They stole. Said, so do you know an Indian didn't know how to scalp? He, he learned that from a white man. Indian didn't scalp people. They learned to scalp people from the white man because that's what the white man done. He'd get in and, and scalp him, take his hair off. How wicked and ungodly have been some of the people of America. And it's no wonder. It's no wonder that America's in the condition it's in. And it ain't going to get no better. We're in the church of Laodicea. This thing's going down, buddy. It's going down. And uh, well, what, about, what am I going to do? I'm just going to stay in the fight, preach yeah, about Jesus right. Christ, tell people about the Lord, yeah. try to find somebody that I can help. Amen. That's all that, it, that I'm here for. And, and the problem is, I got caught up into that thing, thinking about uh, the massive. I didn't know what he said. David said, is there any of the house of Saul left yeah, right. that I may show him kindness for Jonathan's sake? Right. One person. Child of God, there's only one person you should be looking at. Trying to find that one person that you could lead to Jesus Amen. Christ. That one person, maybe you find a child of God has be, been beat to pieces about the world. Maybe you could be the one that one person could yeah, recover. Amen. Brother Chip Williams, I preached with him up in, uh, up in Michigan years ago. Great preacher. Brother Chip got out of the will of God, and for 20 years I had his name on the rock on the mountain praying for him and didn't know what happened to him. The wife went up on the mountain, she said, Went up and prayed. She said, Lord, please let us know whether Chip is alive or dead. The very next week, I got a phone call. I was down, to, uh, down there walking at the church, and it was Chip Williams. And he said, uh, Preacher Allen, he said, somebody told me you had my name on a rock on the mountain. I said, yeah, your name's on, a, on that mountain. Been praying for you for 20 years, Chip. He said, I need to get right with God right now. Mm. Old Chip got right with God. He's been serving God for, for six years, and these sorry preachers won't let him preach in their pulpit. Mm. They're sorry as he is. God forgave him. Yeah, right. Why are you holding all of that to, to him? He's living for God. He's proved himself. Mm. It's because too many times people are self-righteous. Yeah, right. And friend, I'm going to tell you, I don't deserve nothing that God done for Bobby Hutton. I deserve to be in the charred walls of hell since I've been saved. <laughs> it's only the grace of God that I'm here alive today. And everything I have, it came from him. And I owe him everything. Because I could got washed overboard in the North Atlantic and it never found my body. And I would have been burning in hell. Thank God for an old grandmother, an old Methodist grandmother was praying for me. Amen. Not only that, buddy, she was the one that told me, I was standing there and this guy was preaching on the, on the radio and he was using a revised standard version. My grandma said, Bobby, what he's preaching now is I need the word of God. I said, hey, son, the King James Bible is the only word of God. Don't you let nobody talk you out of it. She said, that Bible he's uh, preaching out, that's a pink Bible. And I said, what? She said, that's a communist Bible. And the communists did have a hand in the Revised Standard Version. And J.C. Philpott told them, he said in 1857, J.C. Philpott said, if you mess with that book, you're going to end up with two lines of manuscript. That's what we have. They're going to take God out of Timothy. They have. They're going to they mess with 1 first, uh, first John 5, 7. And they did. Yeah, right. Right. And your NIV does not have 
that does not have that scripture for, in, in Acts 8 where he, where he said, what doth hinder me to be baptized? He said, if thou believest with all I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. That's not in there, not they. Now, it's in the new King James because they, they, could, they couldn't dump that when they'd be in trouble. NIV, there's 64,000 words. It's in your books, not there. 17 complete verses are moved. And you're going to call out a Bible, the Word of God? Don't let, don't let nobody ever talk you out of the King James Bible. 161, what is that? That's 9 letters, ain't it? That's 9, ain't it? The fruit of the Spirit is 9. The ninth book of the New Testament, you got the 9 fruits of the Spirit. King James, that's 9, nine letters. We got the book. Yeah, right. We got the greatest book this world has ever known. Yeah, amen. When they rejected their king in, in Acts 7, 51, ye stiff-necked, you uncircumcised in heart and ears, you do always resist the Holy Ghost as your fathers did. So they resisted the Father in the Old Testament. They re resisted the Son in the Gospels. And here in Acts, they resist the Holy Ghost. And uh, let me ask you a question. I think Calvin's wrong. They did what? Resist the Holy Ghost? Right, right. Well, I think Calvin teaches irresistible grace. Yeah, right, right. And I'll tell you another thing. How did Jesus Christ die on the cross of Calvin? Yeah, right. He didn't die like that. That's yeah, right. He amen. died like that. Amen. That's right. Both had the same opportunity. That's right. yeah, amen. One believed and the other didn't. That's exactly yeah, right. amen. Calvin's doctrine is far. You can't even show me where Calvin ever got saved. He was running from the Roman Catholics and trying to get out from that because he was a Catholic. He's the one started his hellish doctrine. And he got his doc doctrine from St. Augustine. And this guy was a weirdo reprobate you ever seen in your life. He come from Alexander, Egypt. Yeah. Only good thing ever come out of Egypt was Jesus Christ when I called my son out of Egypt. Yeah. And people need to understand that how, how they rejected that. Which of the prophets have not your fathers persecuted? And they have slain them which showed uh, for of the coming of the just one, of whom ye ha have been now a betrayers and murderers, who have received the law by the dispensation of angels and have not kept it. And when they heard these things, they were cut to the heart, and they gnashed upon him with their teeth. But he, being full of the Holy Ghost, looked up steadfast into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. And he said, Behold, I see in heaven open and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. He's ready to come back. They said, Oh, he's just standing up to re receive uh, John. If he was standing up to receive Caesar, do you, do you know what Jesus would be like if he had to, he stood up every time, every somebody come yeah. home to heaven? It would be a jumping jack. No, he, he stood up to come back. He, he, he told his son, okay, I'll give him one more chance. And they didn't. And but when they gnashed upon him, then, then Jesus Christ takes the last part of that scripture in Isaiah. He takes it out and it's taken away. Why? Because uh, they have literally humiliated the son of the living God before the world and brother God's angry. Yeah, right. He's angry. You don't want to get God angry at you. Now, he ain't going to put you in hell, but, but he knows how to take you out to the woodshed. Yeah, right. Take a clapboard and beat you. Try to get you straightened out. Years ago, I was I don't know what happened. I, I know, I, I, well, I do know. The Lord was trying to show me something. And it was, for, it was months. I could read the Bible and get nothing. I could pray, didn't hear nothing from God. I was laying in my bed, and the women was on the mountain praying. I was laying in my bed in tears. I said, God, what have I done? He said, Son, you ain't done nothing. I just wanted to show you what it'd be like without, without me. 
I said, I don't want to feel it. It felt like two big old arms grabbed me and hugged me. I'm going to tell you one thing. You don't want to get to that point. Uh, Brother David uh, Hyde happened to him. He got out of the will of God. And, and uh, uh, Brother David, we should be a member of our church, and he got out of the will of God. And, he, and he, t he told God, that he said, let me out of this. He told me he ended up joining the outlaws, getting drunk, and I called him. He said that day, God would deal with me all day, preacher, and you called me, invited me to y'all's revival. And I said, before that bunch of outlaws, I was crying like a baby, and they was looking, what, what in the world was that in him? It's only the grace of God that let him out, but he's out of the outlaws, and he's back in church serving God now. And see, you never know when you make a phone call. It may be a phone call that's going to save somebody's life. You got a brother or sister in these church and they're not serving God now. Maybe you ought to get on the phone and call them. Let them know, let them know you care. Because your care can, can make the difference. So what we have here is that the Bible is plain and clear that he was humiliated before the Roman Empire. And because of that, the Lord took out the last part of that scripture. See, when, when they had him said, about him being the king. That was the point and opportunity for Israel to do what they were supposed to do. Declare his generation then. If they just stood and said, he, he is our king. Jesus Christ would have come back and set it up. Well, what would I, I don't know, I don't know. But I do know, I don't care what the situation is, God, God's got everything planned. He's got a plan for every, every situation. It can be this way. I told a fellow one time, I, I won't give you this illustration. Give me two books, two, two song books. And I know which one he's going to pick up, but I don't make him pick it. Jesus Christ knew. God knew everybody would ever get saved, but he never made nobody. Mm, Why? Right. Because he, he's a gentleman. That's right. He won't push yeah, himself right. on you in a minute. That's right. And it's, it's you. You're the one that's going to have the problem. Say, if I knew which book that he was going to pick up, and I'd say, pick up one of them books, and I knew which one, but I didn't make him pick up neither yeah, one of them. Right. That's, right, right. that's the same way this thing, the Calvinistic doctrine is just as wicked and crazy and stupid as anything in the world. God don't make anybody. He gives, you the, he gives you the opportunity. He gives you the message, gives you the opportunity to believe his son, right. and you reject his son, then you burn in hell forever. Right. That's simply it. Amen. People said, well, they're looking, they were looking, in Old Testament, they're looking to the cross. They were. Well, somebody about to tell Peter. Because Peter wasn't looking for a cross. Peter was looking for a king. Yeah, right. When Jesus Christ, when, when talked about uh, going to Calvary, uh, Peter rebuked him. Yeah, right. Jesus Christ said to Peter, Get thee behind me, Satan. Yeah, right. Thou doest not the things of God. Right. So they ain't looking to the cross. Right. They didn't know nothing until after, after Jesus had resurrected and opened their hearts so they could understand. Right. Right. No, that man in the Old Testament, it's a faith and work situation. If you don't believe it, read what the Bible says. The just shall live by his faith. That's right. Read Romans. That's right. The just shall live by faith. That's right. I don't live by my faith. I live by the faith of the Son of God. That's right. I am crucified with Christ. I live, you're not, but Christ living. And the life which I now live in that flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who right. loved me and gave right. Your faith wouldn't get you out this door. Jesus Christ is faith. Amen. And he gives you what faith you have. And the only person that was given faith beyond measure was Jesus Christ. Amen. But we need to understand this is what this thing is about and how God changed those scriptures. And, uh, and I wondered, why did God show me? Those fellows got 
far greater education than I got about, about the Bible. So I, I was talking to Brother Mitch Knuff, and Brother Mitch Cup said, I'll tell you why, preacher. He said, God knows you have a pure heart toward that book. That's right. exactly. Sometimes he'll show you things that he won't show to other people. Amen. And there's another thing he showed me. Naomi and Ruth said, call me not Naomi. Call me Mara, M-A-R-A. For the Almighty has dealt very bitter in me. Go to Exodus. And they came to Mara, M-A-R-A-H. The water was bitter. I said, Lord, what's the difference? He said, what is H2O? He said, I said, it's water. He said, this is bitter water. That's a bitter soul. And he said, son, it ain't every word. It's every letter's inspired. Yeah. Amen. Not every word. The punctuation, everything inspired of God. Every bit of it. And if it wasn't inspired of God, we have some uh, uh, scripture that's put in there. It was never found in no manuscript. It's put there by the Holy Ghost. This book is the pure word of the Holy Ghost. Amen. This is the mouth of God talking to you. When you open this book, you need to realize God is talking to you. Amen. Our Father, thank you, Lord, for uh, being able to teach us concerning that great truth that uh, if anything's ever changed in the New Testament, the Holy Spirit has done it. And I thank you, God, for that. And I pray, Lord, that they receive something about this thing of that and ask how, they, how your people humiliated your son before the Roman Empire and how you took away the last part of that scripture and, and everybody. John the Baptist, Lord, he said, Behold the Lamb of God that take away the sin of the world, not Israel. The world. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name I pray.